Well, 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 well. You're listening to Gloves Off with Professor Butron. All right then, I me say words on point, straight forward. No dream on job, but everybody forward. Issues, facts and solution. Get it at gloves off with Professor Mutron. All right, what other that thing is a revolution. Get it on point with Professor Mutron. Gloves off, no nonsense issues. Politics, community, a better man for Laredo. Gloves off, a revolutionary show. With everything that you need to know. With Professor Mutron. Watch ya! is always on point on point bringing you the best on current issues community affairs and the happenings around us this segment of gloves off is brought to you by the best so pay them a visit check them out this is gloves off From Vancouver, Washington. We're touching base on the movement that he started. How are we doing, Joey? You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. How's Washington right now with all this chaos? <laughs> Washington's crazy. <laughs> um, right, right when we started to reopen the economy a little bit, uh, they start rioting in the big cities, so um, business isn't too good in the big cities. Okay. Um, let's touch base on how did you start your movement, your Patriot Prayer? prayer? Um, it started because during the election of 2016, uh, before Trump had become the Republican nominee, he threw a rally down in San Jose, um, and uh, people were leaving the rally and getting beat up in the streets right in front of the police. Um, and so that, that had really upset me. And then after doing some research, you know, I was able to kind of put two and two together, and I realized what they're doing is, um, they're ramping up the whole racist thing, you know, saying Trump is racist, Trump supporters are racist. Um, and then in these far left cities, uh, the, the police who are usually ran by the mayor, um, the mayor usually has the police just stand down. So they, they drum up all these crazy protesters to come in and beat you up for basically what you believe in. And I think it's really scary if you think about it, um, in the United States of America, that people would be afraid to go listen to someone speak who's running for president. You know, that's really scary. Um, so that's when I started to get involved and started flag waving, um, went down to Cleveland for my first trip. The, that's the RNC, the Republican National Convention. And I met all kinds of people. The police did a really good job. Um, I had a lot of interactions and I was fired up. I, I spent a week down there. I was fired up. I came back and started throwing rallies and, um, then started to go into the far left cities and um, it kind of blew up from there. Over time though, you know, I'm at a point now where I kind of stopped going in there because um, I proved my point. I kind of exposed the hatred 
I exposed the issues in those cities, not just myself, but other people too. Um, and then I started focusing on the constitutional counties going into there and going into places where people want me. Um, and Absolutely. so that's been the transition. Absolutely. You know, in, in Laredo's kind of a, he lives in the bubble. Laredo's heavily Democrat, but you have some of the old conservative Democrats, if you want to put it that way. It's still not leaning to the left, but we do have some leftists, if you want to put it in, in that form, right? So many people over here do not understand what Antifa is, what the Proud Boys are, what the movement movement is, and so on and so forth. And uh, right now, with all the chaos that's going on, especially with the riots that, that people say are protests, and I'm all for protests, believe me, I'm all for protests. If it's the right cause, we all have to stand up and, and shout and make sure that it's known for it. But uh, beating up individuals because you're waving a flag, that's a different story. Okay. Now, tell me, what are the different groups? What are the Proud Boys and Antifa and all that? Start separating them if you can. So the Proud Boys actually started, um, I mean, they were there before, but they got really big, um, especially on the West Coast in 2017, because uh, we were rallying in areas where the police weren't protecting people. So the Proud Boys, no militia really stepped up. Um, so the Proud Boys were kind of, in the beginning, were the group that would go in and just protect people. Um, that's how it started. Over time, they kind of trans they kind of focused away from the rallies. Um, so I think they do go to rallies once in a while, but that's not really their focus anymore. Um, I don't really have anything to do with the Proud Boys anymore. I have no issue with them. Um, I'm just focusing on different things. Um, so the Proud Boys, I would say, in the beginning was kind of uh, a growing force against Antifa. Um, Antifa is a group that dresses in all black, cover their faces, and basically they don't, they don't want to have conversations, they don't want to talk, they want to use force and fear and intimidation to um, keep people off the streets. Um, they'll do stuff like go after your jobs, they'll come to your house, slash your tires, break your windows, um, they'll, they'll do all kinds of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff online, stalking. Um, it's almost an obsession on their part. I, I feel bad for most of them. They're, they're completely miserable human beings. Um, and most of them are communists. A lot of them are communists. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, th th that's the difference between those two groups. Um, Patriot Prayer is really not really a group. It's more of an ideology. Um, it's basically trying to convince people to stand up and to go do their own things. Um, and so, and then Black Lives Matters is a lot different. Um, my experience with Black Lives Matters is a lot more positive. I'm not justifying all their behaviors because, of course, you're going to have tons of, sure. you know, bad behavior on, across the country. But like in Seattle, for example, the Black Lives Matters guys seemed a lot more willing to talk, have conversations. Um, I saw Antifa steal an American flag from someone. And the Black Lives Matters guys kept getting it back and being like, dude, we don't stand for that. We're not here to steal people's stuff. You know what I mean? We're here for a message. Um, I've seen them get upset at Antifa for uh, doing graffiti, for destroying property. Um, when, when they were having riots in Portland, I was down there observing. The one thing I noticed is Antifa were the ones that were breaking all the windows and starting the fires. Um, and then uh, the, um, I see black people just kind of follow them in um, and go and kind of loot. And so um, there's definitely a big difference between Black Lives Matters and Antifa for sure. And they're, 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 um, there's a lot of conflict between the two groups. Okay. And a lot of people see black people going inside and they believe that they're la Black Lives Matter. That's not it. They're just, yeah, they're just the, the people who are looting, I would say what I, from what I personally witnessed was like, teenagers out partying having fun um definitely not there for political reasons and they definitely weren't dressed like they weren't prepared for the protest it looked like um and so yeah it's it's just a lot different than what the media covers you know when you're actually on the ground and you see things firsthand it's a lot different same thing with Chaz or chop or the autonomous zone it's a lot different than what the media has been covering um it's a lot different than what you see on social media it's pretty calm if you're respectful. Um, you know, that, that one guy by himself walked around with an American flag and a Trump hat for a couple hours, and he did get harassed, definitely. 
Um, it was not okay the way that they stole his hat, um, but people there were giving it back. Um, it's, it's unacceptable regardless, but it's not like he got stabbed or, or physically attacked. You went, you went to CHOP, right? You went to that, that, that cell the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I showed up uh, just with two, two black girls from the East Coast who, who flew out here specifically to go into Chaz. Um, and uh, uh, Bevel and Betty is one of them. She's getting kind of famous right now. Her, her videos are going pretty viral. Um, I, I've been watching her for the last couple of weeks, so I had to go in there with her and watch her work. Amazing woman. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would say that, um, you know, if anyone were to be attacked, it would be me. And I walked around with no protection for a couple hours, um, got, a, got a tour, uh, talked to a lot of black people. It seems, in my opinion, from my experience the last few years, and I'm not trying to be racist here, but <laughs> white people are the ones that are the most mean to me. <laughs> it's always white people who call me racist and fascist and all this stuff. Uh, but it seemed to be people colored, people who are colored, like seem to have good conversations with me, like me, hate me, whatever. Um, so I always found that interesting. <laughs> that's, that's interesting to see. Well, you know, um, in Port, let's talk about a little bit about Antifa in Portland. What has caused or what gave them the force to go in there? Was it the, uh, the political stance, the mayor or city council? Or what is giving them the force to do that? What's giving them the motivation? Yeah, not, the motivation and also the guts to do that. You know, you can go out there and protest, but if oh, they don't get arrested. Right. Yeah, so they won't go, like, for example, um, I live in Vancouver, Washington, which is about just 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes from downtown Portland, but it's in a different city, um, a different state, and um, they don't ever show up there because the police in Vancouver, Washington, if you commit any crime, will arrest you and throw you in jail. Um, so the, the justice system is, is not really about justice in Portland, Oregon, um, and they definitely politically charge people. If you are someone like me, um, I got charged with a uh, felony riot. Um, I'm, I'm facing that in court this, this year, hopefully this year. Uh, but I didn't do anything. I just stood there and got assaulted multiple times. But they didn't arrest any of Antifa. So they're definitely protected um, within the city of Portland. Um, they can get away with whatever they want. I saw them riot for hours. Uh, the police just chased them around all night but did not arrest anybody. Um, so... I think that's what gives them the courage. That's, that's a word, the courage that there is given by a political. You see, you have that type of motivation with several others. And here, here is, uh, some people are talking about Antifa having levels or like a brigade system, you know. Some people mention a John Brown Club. Is that part of Antifa? John Brown Club is a more, um, they're more focused on, on gun rights. Um, which I respect that about them. Uh, I would assume that they're more prepared for any sort of civil war or war against the government. One of the guys in Tacoma, Washington, died doing an attack on the, the ICE facility. I don't know if you remember that. Um, he, he set a couple cars on fire and uh, went to a gunshot with, with officers, and, of course, the media did not cover it. I mean, if he was oh, a yeah. right-wing guy, that would have been all over the news, you know, right-wing extremists. Uh, but he's a commie, so it's okay, I guess. Um, so they they do they do things like that. They'll they'll show up to some of the Antifa rallies and stuff. And um, I think for the most part, they don't want any fights in the streets. Um, that's what I've noticed. So they're a little bit more organized, a little bit more mature, and um, they don't cover their faces as much. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting group. Um, but there are definitely different levels of Antifa. You have the guys at the bottom who um, are the street soldiers who uh, are expendable, uh, I would assume don't get paid money. Um, you know, I'm sure they get some sort of, I'm sure they get some financing on equipment and stuff, but definitely the organizers definitely get paid. Um, I don't know if you saw Project Veritas has kind of come out with some stuff lately. Uh, they infiltrated the Portland Antifa. And um, I mean, they have a whole system. They, they, they meet at a bookstore, you know, and talk about, <laughs> eye gouging and, and putting down Trump supporters. And um, so it's definitely an organization. There's definitely funding and there's definitely different levels. Let me tell, let me tell you when I started, uh, we have a friend in common, which is Jen Lo, And uh, 
several years ago, doing a seminar, I was doing a seminar, and I was teaching martial arts over there in Stockton, California area. There was a lot of individuals from all over California, Northern California. And uh, what happened was that uh, later on, I started seeing them say that they were part of Antifa and they were going to be part of going to Portland. Okay. So as that was going on, as that was going on, several martial art instructors from the California area were saying, did you see so-and-so post that they're going to be training these individuals to go after Trumpsters and right-wingers and Republicans and so on and so forth. So they are getting training. I mean, there's some martial arts schools in Austin and in San Marcos that are heavily geared for training at Tifa. And you can see it in some of the videos. You can see some of them are trained and some of them are just jamokes running around with sticks in their hand. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. So I, I don't think it's the best training in the world, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, me neither. But you know, they're, they're, they're getting some, something or other. Yeah. So they're being trained. And uh, I'm pretty sure that one of them goes, takes classes and goes, teaches the rest. That's basically what I think it's going on. So, What's so your next word? I said, I'm, I believe that there, there's one in the group that goes, get some serious training and then he goes back and kind of teaches them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Man, and I, I think, think that's, I think there's people what? that are getting paid, but they're not at the bottom. They're just the organizers. Um, and they have, you know, they know all the names, the people, the faces, you know, who can do what. They have different levels. Even the guys on the streets have different levels. You have the, the, the what, what you would call like the red team. They're the ones that break the law um, and then hide in the crowd. Uh, while the people in the front of the line are typically the ones who do not break the law, but they help, they help hide those who, who do break the law. So you have different different types of people with different roles, medics, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. What's your next project? Um, I, I've been working a lot with the, the lockdown. I'm, I've been helping businesses open um, uh, uh, that technically violate the unconstitutional lockdown orders. Um, we have one lady that just got criminally charged. Her name's Kelly Carroll. She's the owner of the pet biz. Um, she opened up and had a rally out in front of her place. A couple hundred people showed up. Uh, she just got criminally charged about a week ago. So uh, on Saturday, we're going to have a decent sized giant rally in front of um, in front of the Clark County Courthouse in Vancouver, Washington. Um, and we're going to put a lot of pressure on the police and the DA. Uh, you know, and the key is getting the community together. We have to support one another. It's just that's just key. We have so much going up against us. Uh, they can pick on us as individuals. It's a lot easier th for them to do that. Um, but if the community says no, uh, we will be successful together, um, united. And the cool thing about this is it's really not political. Um, this isn't really a political stance. It's not, you know, Democrats or Republicans together should agree on this, that the government should not have the power to pick and choose who's essential and who isn't essential. I mean, um, talk about fascism, you know, the left always talks about fascism. What, what better example do you need than that, right? Absolutely. I mean, they have full control. And Absolutely. so they get to pick the winners and the losers. Absolutely. And that's what's going on over here. Yeah. We went into lockdown and we were, we just opened up. And yesterday, the governor gave the ability for municipalities to go ahead and find business. So yesterday, city council here in Laredo, Texas, voted to find businesses. Now, people are saying that they're, they're supposed to go out and find individuals or the business. It's a, it's a, they're confused at this time. But it's going to start again. And what happens, what I see is they got power drunk. They felt some power. And yeah. they don't want to let go with it. You know, I, I always told people, there's three, there's three things that we have to fight during this pandemic or the scamdemic, if you want to call it that way. One is the virus itself. It does exist. How are we going to deal with it? Second, how are we going to kick back our economy? How are we going to start back businesses? And some of these businesses are no longer going to be around. How are we going to start the businesses back again in, 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 in each individual city around the United States? And third, how are we going, to, we going to bring back an equal government? Because way too many elected government officials, public officials, have already gotten drunken with power. 
and they're not going to want to, to let go of that power. So that's the last phase. Well, the problem is we're going to go, they're going to bring in another lockdown. Yeah. If you, if you read the news, the news, although the news is fake, it always lets you know what their plans are because they, they prep the, the public. Sure. Um, sure. So you're seeing a lot of news articles about, oh, a second wave, second wave, second wave, um, be ready for a second lockdown. So they're going to come down to a second lockdown. But here's the thing, the second time around, um, they're going to be a lot more strict uh, because there's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to say, no, I'm not closing down again because they barely even made it through the first lockdown. That's why I believe they criminally charged Kelly um, because they're getting ready for a second lockdown. Um, and they're trying to make an example out of her. So I think it's important for everybody um, who has a voice to, to make the declaration right now that they're going to try, they're going to go to a second lockdown and we have to say, no, the more people that say no, the more power that we have. Um, we've got to stop complying because the, the um, destroying this economy is a lot more dangerous than the virus. A lot more dangerous. Oh, for during sure. the great depression, during the great depression, you had about 7 million people who died. Um, and, and, and 45% of the country at that time was self-sustainable. Right. Right now we have like 5% of the country that's self-sustainable. So if we go into a depression, um, it's going to be really bad. I mean, most people don't even know how to make a sandwich, um, let alone survive uh, without going to the grocery store. So I think for me, I believe that um, getting people to, to keep their businesses open and to open their businesses, that for me, that's my way of, of fighting for freedom and trying to save this country. Of course, of course. And it's going to get worse. The violence is going to get worse. I think uh, these protests are going to get a lot more violent. I think it's going to, it's going to ease down, and all of a sudden it's going to go boom. The, the protests, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, they're getting a little bit crazier. Um, I also think that when Trump starts to rally again, uh, uh, that's going to be really interesting. You're going to see, there's a lot of conservatives right now that are really upset and angry and they're, they're ready to go out onto the streets. Um, and so I think that you're going to see tens of thousands of people just standing outside of these Trump events who can't even get in. And, uh, you're obviously you're going to see a lot of protesters. Uh, so that, that's going to amp some things up for sure. You know, and Trump's going to win regardless, but there's going to be a huge upset on a lot of sitting elected public officials. Understand what I'm saying? There's yeah. going to be folks there that have been there for 20, 30 years are no longer going to be there. People are going to vote people out. And it's going to be on both sides of the stream, Republicans as well as Democrats. They're going to be voted out. Well, the interesting thing is, that's why I don't get like, uh, all these riots are happening in Democrat-controlled areas. But people are so obsessed with just voting for the same party, you know? Um, cool. Like the, all these shootings, all these shootings that happen that people are so upset about, they're always in cities ran by Democrat mayors, you know. Um, you take the black Americans, for example, I think over 90 percent of them vote Democrats, but 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 they don't like their situation. So I don't understand why they continue to vote Democrat. I, I talk to them about that all the time. Um, and it's because they believe that Republicans are racist. They seriously believe that. Um, and so. But, but really, Democrats are extremely racist. They're, they're so racist. They're so, some of the most racist people, I, I don't want to be um, um, divisive, but the most racist people I've ever met are Democrats, white Democrats. They go around and talk about how black people are too stupid to be able to get an ID, right? That's their excuse for being against voter ID laws. Um, they, they, they truly look down on black people. They don't understand the power of the human spirit, right? So I'm the mo most least racist person you'll ever meet in your life because I believe in people. I don't care what your color of skin is. I believe that if you put in the work and the effort, you can accomplish anything that you want, right? That's the opposite of being racist. That's believing a, 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 what, what's on the inside. But these Democrats are so obsessed with skin color. Also tell you this, um, I, I, up here in, in Washington, um, Oregon, people um, segregate. Like, <laughs> Black people hang out with black people, white people hang out with white people. But down south, where everyone's supposed to be racist, you know, you go into a bar down south and it's just tons of blacks and whites hanging out together, right? And so, I don't know. Or Oregon, Portland's, Portland and Seattle, they, they just, they got a lot of issues when it comes to race, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's going to, and the other thing you need is the power of vote. And I think all this lockdown is for Trump not to get 
voted into office. That's all it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, we'll see what happens in terms of the election. I, I don't really know what's going to happen anymore. I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow because <laughs> it's 2020. Um, but we'll see. I'm super excited to get this year over with and get this election done and over with um, so the country can hopefully move on. Um, I think that if Trump wins, I think that um, Trump will probably, hopefully, I'm praying, he'll make bigger moves of arresting these criminals um, in the government. And uh, I don't know. Then he gets, you know, obviously presidents are a lot more aggressive the second term than they are the first term. Um, so we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Joey, it was a great talk. Let, let us know what you're doing and keep up the good work, okay? Because it needs people right. like you that are going to change. All right? I appreciate it. Peace. You be safe. Bye.